Okay guys, so the very first step in the process is I'm going to go ahead and create a new model. Um, of course, if you're using an older version of Spectrum, take in mind some of these screens can vary as far as uh, how they look or how they read. But it should all be, again, just, just cross compatible. So um, we'll go ahead and jump into mine real quick. Let's go model select. Be sure that you don't accidentally wipe out one of your other models while doing this. So this one I just, it's a blank model. It's just labeled heli. So I'm going to select that. Now, I have had a few conversations with the, the gentlemen that represent AccuRC, and it has been confirmed that you should be able to use the simulator with either fixed wing or airplane mode. That should just allow maybe some other auxiliary channels, um, or you can also use the helicopter setting. I found the most success with the helicopter setting just because it's what I'm familiar with um, as far as using things like throttle curves and whatnot. So... I'm going to select that, of course, if it does have any information on it, it's going to override it, so make sure. Go ahead and take your time to name it. I'm not going to do that because you'll hear all the loud clicks. Um, first thing is you do want to make sure, of course, this is a sim. Most of the programming and mixing is done within the simulator. So we'll be at one servo 90, or in this case, it just lets me select normal. Make sure that's done. Um, after that, real quick here, let's skip over to the channel assign. Um, obviously everything's, you know, similar, throttle to throttle, aileron, you know, you got your gear and your pitch and everything. Now if you come over here to your little next screen, we want to make sure we're in the channel input configuration. This is where we're going to be able to activate through the sim our idle up and also our throttle hold. This was the part that was a little tricky, but I'm pretty sure I got it all worked out. So right now it defaulted my gear, which is what we're going to use for throttle hold, to a channel, um... D, which on my radio is is this switch position here. I don't use that one. I use this switch here, which is F. Don't mind that it's a three position switch. Um, it's going to read it either way. So I'm going to switch this over real quick to F. And then our other channel here, the aux 2, it's set to a knob. I'm going to use that again as a um, three position switch here for my idle up. On my DX7, that is going to be uh, switch B. So let's go in here. Boom. B. Okay, and then we can go back. And again, guys, feel free to assign your switches in any way appropriate. Um, everybody flies a little bit differently. So, And then we do, of course, want to make sure that our flight modes are active. So we'll come right over here to the flight mode setup. Um, of course, again, it's got my flight mode set to switch B, and you can see that this is active uh, right down here when I toggle my switch, right? It's going to select each one, so we're good there. Now, next, we're going to go ahead and um, uninhibit throttle hold, and again, I've got that set here to switch F. Use your switch accordingly, so A, B, C, D, E, F here. Now, of course, on the on this radio in particular, we do want to make sure that, that each mode is, is enabled. So what I mean by that is you'll notice uh, with my switch toggles, right now I'm in normal, flight mode 1, flight mode 2. But now that I've got these ones blacked out, if I go over here and actually hit throttle hold, it should switch to hold mode. If I go back down to idle 1, hit my throttle hold, it should now still read hold. And if I drop back down into normal mode, it should still say hold. Okay? So make sure that's correct. And let's see here. I believe that's it. So after all of that's done, go ahead and just jump into the main mode. And we'll go over just real quick the final settings on the radio. Okay, guys. So jumping into essentially the main uh, features of the radio, the main menu here. Um, what we're going to want to do from here, and this is just to my understanding, if there is any corrections needed to this, please leave them in the comments below. Um, but I found this should, to work perfectly fine, and it also helps with the switch setup and assignments. So, um, going into throttle curve, uh, as always, you've got your normal. In my case, you've got an idle one and an idle two. So it's a three position switch, and the simulator is going to read a series of three different um, programmable RPMs that you can use. And you want to have it be able to read the, the channel output. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my normal to just 25% all the way across. Uh, oh, here we go. Forgive all the clicks here. And 
25. Be nice if they'd let you just type in the numbers instead of doing the scrolling, but that's okay. And then what we're going to want to do um, for idle 1 is we'll go ahead and do 50%. And then for idle 2, we'll just make it a flat 100% across. And again, to my best understanding, this just helps when setting up, you know, things like the, the three different RPM values that you're going to want to use um, within the simulator. And it does let you select those in manually. I think it just uses this just for the readings. So let's see, let me get this one to 50, 50. Um, I don't believe that it actually matters the values in question. I believe you could probably use any variation, you know, 51, 55. I think as long as they're just different and distinguishable, um, you shouldn't have any issues. However, if you are having issues within the sim with your RPM readouts uh, and toggling between modes, maybe that could be it. But I've just went 25, 50, and 100 on everything. Again, in the throttle curve menu. And we are good. Now, of course, <clears throat> we should know at this point, you know, hold is just going to be 0% flat. So, um, other than that, everything else should remain linear. You don't have to go in and adjust anything in the gyro or anything like that. So, our radio is now going to be ready for the uh, setup process and pairing. Um, the binding was a little bit tricky, so pay close attention to this part. I found out a couple of uh, different ways around it. I think I found the method that works the best. Um, so let's go ahead and get the software loaded up, and we'll go through the binding process. Okay, guys, so the transmitter is set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump over to our screen, and let's open up the application here. Now, of course, I'm using... Uh, Steam as my means of using the application. I don't know if they sell it in a disk form or, or whatnot, but this is what I was given. Of course, as always, make sure you get it updated to the latest version um, 2.0, as you can see here at the top. They've got a, real, a lot of really cool new models out. You know, they'll have the Rave, the Kraken, and Kraken Nitro, all that fun stuff. So, before we get into having a good time, though, let's go ahead and get our transmitter set up here. So, we're going to go to the transmitter tab. Now, since we're going wireless, guys, at this point in time, I do not have my transmitter on. If you're using a wired-in dongle or something, you may need to. But since we're going wireless, we need to bind first. So this was a little tricky for me. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to do a brand new radio. So I'm just going to go ahead and even just, just delete this one, okay? So we're going to click. You can see here on the left, we've got our, our different options. We're going to start in the transmitter tab, and I'm going to go ahead and select a new one. Now, it does have a lot of preloads in here. If you want to go custom, if you've got some weird radio you got from China or something, but I'm going to go ahead and just go with our Spectrum. It's as easy as just following through, so let's click Next. Now, it does a bit of an auto-detect here, which I thought was really unique. You can see right up top here, RX2 SIM. Uh, the dongle mode, it sets default game controller. Now, this is crucial here because this is where the hiccup kind of started with trying to get this to bind, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. You guys go ahead and set your uh, settings appropriately. And we're good there. So now we can jump over to the device. Now there's a lot going on up here, um, and this is the area that I want to point your attention to, because obviously if I try moving around my sticks right now, nothing's moving. Obviously my radio's not on, so... Um, but bind is grayed out. I can't, I can't bind my receiver. And so I sat here for a long time thinking to myself, what in the heck's going on? Uh, however, I kind of found, I, f I figured this out. So input mode, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch real quick. We're going to set it to DSMX Spectrum Satellite or DSM2 or whatever you're using here, right? So you'll notice when I set this here, boom, I can now click bind. Okay, now when I do click this bind button, let's do so now. Let's give it a sec here. Let me see if this turns on. It should. Hang up. I found what happens is if you unplug and plug it back in. There it is. Yep. So actually, yeah, leave your satellite unplugged and then click bind, plug it back in. So you'll see that we're flashing. Now you should be familiar with, of course, how to bind on your transmitter, so I'm going to go ahead and do so now. Um, I'll just get it out, as always, hold down your bind button, toggle it on.
There it is. Okay, let it all bind up. Now here's the kicker that I found. I mean, we should be bound to this satellite, which means I should not have input and control, right? Well, as I move my sticks around, you can see here that nothing is moving on screen. And that is because what you now need to do is input mode. If we go back over here, and I think, let me make sure we're doing this right, we set this to game controller. Look at this, I've still got a solid LED, I'm bound, but now all of a sudden my, my, uh, my toggles are all working. Alright guys, so moving on to the next portion, um, as you can see we've got everything set up here. Um, I can go ahead and I should be able to uh, move around my sticks and things um, if we're over here on device. And uh, if you look, you know, I can kind of move and toggle around all my, my, my movements, my aileron, elevator, rudder, my switches that I have selected. Now, what we need to do first is let's go ahead and calibrate the radio before we worry about the channel assignments. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, let's jump over here to device and let's spend some time here for a minute because here's what's important to make sure we're getting full readout. So we should see, we should be seeing, you know, that, that minus 100 and plus 100 if you're sitting at 99. I mean, nobody's going to lose any sleep over it. But first one we're going to pay attention to here, guys, throttle and collective. They should be within the same channel or on the same plane, if you will. So you'll notice they move together. All the way up gives me 100 on throttle and uh, 100 on collective all the way down. It hits me at 99, but hey, that's okay. Um, now you'll notice though here, those are represented by axis 6. Keep that in mind in case we had to remap or reassign channels. We know that axis 6 is throttle and collective. Now let's go for rudder. You'll notice here, oh yeah, yeah, look at this, look at this here. So you'll notice when I move rudder, it's actually moving elevator. So let's let's use our our, uh, our brains here for a minute. Let's think elevator um, is moving on access three, but really that should be rudder. So access four, let's get out. Let's simply just do a drop down here. Let's move this to access three. And I'm just gonna scoot this to, I don't know, access four. Let's see what that does. So let's focus on one, one axis at a time. Rudder is now working. And again, you'll notice that when I move left rudder, I get a 99, almost 100, right rudder, 99, almost 100, so that one's looking good. Don't worry about whether whether or not it's, you know, in that dead center uh, yet, because I, I know that that part we can always calibrate out at a later time. Uh, elevator, let's move to elevator, forward. Okay, so I think I see a pattern here, because now aileron, access 2, is moving on elevator's axis. So let's move this to access 2. I'll go ahead and just bump this to 1. So let's recheck elevator forward 100%, backwards 100%. Everything looks good. We may actually have to revisit that tail here in a minute because I don't know why that one's not dead center, but we'll take a look at it. Um, aileron, jump over here, is actually access one. Okay, so that's working. So let's double check real quick. Throttle and collective move together and they're in sync, right? They're both 100 minus 100. Rudder gives me full travel it's not centering, so I might retry the calibration one more time. Uh, aileron, or I'm sorry, elevator, forward and backwards. Aileron, right and left. Everything looks good there the way that it should be. Yeah, see that? You see that, you guys? Fix the rudder immediately. So I must have made a goof there. So no worries. Now we're still getting plus 100, minus 100. Everything's working. Boom. Radio is calibrated. Last and only step that we need to do, then we can start flying and fine-tuning our machines. <clears throat> this part was tricky as heck, but now that I understand it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, what I'm going to do first off, just to eliminate all factors, is uh, let's go down to the very bottom. You'll see weapons, rescue, ground lights, dual rates. I'm going to inhibit all of them. Okay, so none, none. That way you're not getting confused by a bunch of stuff moving on the screen, even throttle hold. Let's take them all off. And let's just start one at a time. That way you have a better understanding of how this is going to work. Um, you'll notice, let's start with our with our, um, our idle up switches. 
Now, if you look over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice when I toggle my switch, I get some stuff moving around, right? It looks like this is going to be tied to Access 4. I do see the button movements here. They don't seem to affect it, though. So Access 4 toggles my idle up. So let's go RPM 1, Access 4. Now, you'll notice right here is what you want to pay attention to. See this green circle? That represents normal mode or RPM 1. You'll notice when I bump it, it moves a little bit, and then it moves a little bit more. These green lines here represent at, at what point the simulator is going to um, key on those, those frames or the RPM settings based upon the switch algorithm here. So all you have to do, guys, is literally just put this right in front, bring this little guy right behind, boom, we are now in normal mode, and this is green, so the system recognizes it, right? So now if I come over here to RPM 2, access 4, now look, they're both on because this green line is also reading the same. So all we have to do is let's bump it up into idle up one, boom. So it's still on, you'll notice it deactivated one. That's okay because this green circle is now outside of the reading point. So all we're gonna do is the same thing. Bring this right to where this starts and right to where it ends. That should be good. Now let's go back down into one. Boom. See, normal mode one, green only. Idle up one, green only. We'll go ahead and do the same. Idle up two. This will be your highest RPM. It'll be access four. Three position switch. And we just want to drag this little guy right down to here. Right down to here. And bada boom. So now we can go from two, one, normal. One, two. Okay? Uh, throttle hold. Let's look over here under the right. Throttle hold seems to be moving on access 5, and it's also interrupting our access 4. So let, let's try something here. Let's go over here and let's put throttle hold here on access 5 real fast. Now look how high up that goes for some reason, right? That goes all the way up there. And you'll notice it goes backwards as I'm hitting the switch, right? You see that? That's why it's it's interrupting these other ones here. So I'm going to reverse that with the reverse feature here. Okay. Now, this will be normal, so we don't want it to be on during the normal mode. So if we go here, hold starts right there. So we're going to go right here. And it doesn't hurt to get that second position on the switch, just to be safe. I mean, sometimes you might bump it, and boom, there we go. So now you'll notice if I toggle any of these, nothing, right? I can come out of hold, normal mode, idle up, idle up, hold. Okay, everything is working. I'm just going to come right out of idle two. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, Freddy can fly, so can you.